welcome to the Album Man. Now it's been nearly three years since I've been reviewing albums old and new, and in that time only two releases have ever garnered that elusive 10 out of 10. One of them being Rush's monolithic and brilliantly well realised concept album Clockwork Angels, and Anathema's emotionally captivating sonic landscape of Weather Systems. And there's been some other albums which I haven't reviewed in that time period that I would probably give tens, like Baroness's Yellow and Green, and Woods of Eeps, um, Grey Skies and Electric Light. Weirdly, they were all in 2012, as in 2013 I just couldn't quite find what I was searching for on album. So far in 2014, up to this point, I mean, I had some wonderful albums this year, 2014 has certainly had some highlights, but nothing until Otter had blown me away in quite the same way as the tens I listed before. Otter truly satiated my appetite for something just truly beautiful, as that is what I personally search for more than anything else in an album. Some may search for a heavy riff or a catchy chorus, or but for me, it's just something beautiful, something I can emotionally relate to. And that really is how I feel for Otter. And for the first time in a long time, this is an album that I have no gripes with, no nitpicks. It's something that as much as I hate to give this rating on a new release, I have no choice because this album has touched me so personally, it's an album I feel so connected with, that I have no choice but to give this album a 10 out of 10. This is my album of the year for 2014, and in this review I'm going to tell you why, and why you bloody well should hear it. So firstly let's give you a bit of background on who Solstice Fair are, so it's quite understandable that you might not know who the hell we're talking about. So these are an Icelandic band, who sing entirely in Icelandic, like uh, Sigur Rash. And a bit like Alcest, they used to be more of a black metal band before they stripped away those elements, I mean, completely and utterly by this point. On Otter, there's no black metal whatsoever, no black metal vocals, everything's clean vocally, though you may not understand the words of them unless you happen to speak Icelandic, which I, I certainly don't. And this album is built around quite an interesting concept. It's based on an old system of Icelandic timekeeping called Ekt, or meaning eight, which split the day into eight parts with each section lasting three hours. And this album is unsurprisingly eight tracks, which takes you through an entire day. It's quite an interesting concept and it definitely piqued my interest. Um, particularly as the form of timekeeping, it's sort of more open than the modern corporate world's days in which each minute is vital, and it certainly offers something interesting in the way that they uh, betray a day. Lagnetti, and sorry I will end up butchering these names as I don't speak Icelandic, and that is the track that opens this album, it translates to Low Night, and this takes us through the first part of this journey, with piano chords slowly struck on the first beat of each bar, as gradually the song builds as the vocalist, and I'm so sorry, I cannot pronounce any of the names of the band members, I'm afraid, so I'm just going to have to refer to them. Um, by the instruments they play. Really sorry about that, Sol's Defer. And yes, his voice sings over the sparse instrumentation and showcases just immediately from the outset what a beautiful voice he has. And while I did not understand words that he was singing about, I was still captivated by every word he did sing, every piece of emotion that spewed forth that I could indirectly detect before the song just kicks into gear, the guitars come in as the drummer drives forth this music. And the guitar is simply used more sort of for ambience at this point, as each note is sustained and adds to the atmosphere before the vocalist comes back with so much power as he bellows out each word on top of the ever-increasing crescendo which just adds more strings and piano, culminating in the most beautiful of cacophonies I've heard in a long time in any form of music. Each instrument, piano, violin, guitar, then seem to get their turn at being the prominent fixation of the song and each just deliver without fail to add to the ever-increasing weight of this song. I mean, if this song couldn't get any better, the cacophony then dies, and we get to, almost in a way slightly reminiscent to the way that in Derek and the Domino's Layla, you know, that has all the guitar bit, the chorus, and then it just suddenly goes to this sort of piano section. This, this song switches to a fairly long sort of piano outro to a new um, piano melody with a 
fairly, I would say, maybe uplifting, hopeful feeling to it, which seems to be further accentuated by the singer. And this song, I mean, just overall, this takes atmosphere, like post-rock, post-metal, whatever the hell you want to classify this as, I don't really care, because whatever it is, it takes it to dizzying heights of compositional complexity that just grips you throughout. Otter, the title track, takes us through the night to the early hours of the morning and dawn. And Otter is a song that really is just so full of texture in the lush yet minimalist instrumentation of the opening portion of the song, with a gentle, brilliantly timed build before you have the primary melody. And the primary melody here really surprised me because it's driven by a banjo. Yeah a banjo, and it has this sort of blues grass feel to it. Now before this song, I have to say I probably never found a single song in which I actually like the banjo, I really just dislike the banjo as an instrument, or bluegrass elements. Bluegrass is not a genre I'm at all a fan of, it's just a style I dislike an instrument I don't like. But yet here, here Solstice managed to masterly incorporate it into the song, providing my favourite riff on the album, probably my favourite riff of 2014. The banjo melody sort of coupled to that distorted guitars and the strings that soar over the top crit is odd yet extremely ear-pleasing mixture of sounds, just one of the most rich textured pieces of music of 2014, and certainly I would say the last couple of years, the dynamics as they go from the riff to the parts of sparse minimalism or the gentle vocal um, accompanied parts, just keep the track fresh and interesting for at each listen, and you really it's one of those that sort of unfolds itself the more you listen to, and that whole album's like that. This really is an album that just gets better with each listen, each time you're hearing something slightly new, and it's just always an enjoyable experience. And if this wasn't enough, the crescendo at the end is quite simply sublime, just a thing of pure, absolute beauty, and one of the most powerful crescendos I've just ever had full stop as layer upon layer is added and with each layer I just feel a wave of tingling travelling down my spine. You feel as if you've entered Nirvana as it takes you to just the most blissful, most drug-like transcendent place you've ever been to. This is the song of 2014 without a doubt. This is a work of art in the highest degree. Next we have Rizmao, and the a cappella opening leads into one of the shorter and maybe heavier songs on the album. The vocalist here delivers one of his most heart-wrenching vocal performances, you really become entranced by the vocals in this album, and I would honestly say the vocals just take a another dimension in this album, you really feel almost like an instrument in of themselves. Not to say vocals aren't usually an instrument, but usually, I suppose because I mainly listen to music with English lyrics, you tend to, well, just, you know, be focused around the lyrics, more so with the vocals, but here, instead I find that I'm able to listen to the vocals in a pure way, and just instead be able to hear the nuance and the emotion that the vocalist conveys, and I find it a very interesting experience, and certainly something a bit uh, different, so that's what I sort of mean when I refer to the vocals more of an instrument than the other vocals on other albums. And really the beating heart of this song is the distortion drenched lead riff, and it's just another killer riff on this album. I really love the tone that the guitars have um, on this album, they've got a really nice fuzzy distorted tone to them, it works very well for this type of music. And one of the highlights in particular is the guitar solo here, now there's not that many on the album, it's all about quality over quantity, each of the solos on the album just feels perfectly placed and timed to play with your emotions like a puppet on a string in the same way though that the rest of the album does. The next song is Dag Mao, and this takes us into noon, sort of the halfway point of the album. This is a surprisingly catchy and melodic song with more of an emphasis on the chorus than the songs before, which again just goes to show the diversity of this record, as the sun is reaching its peak in the day, and you really feel that this is a bit more sort of an upbeat but still powerful song, particularly after the three minute mark. This part of the song really caught me off guard with just how simply super blime and vocally perfect it is. I mean, he really hits the notes just so spot on. I mean, I just, I know I praise the vocalist a lot here, but 
I just can't give it justice with mere words. And this song also reminded me of Alcestin a bit, wouldn't have felt massively out of place on their last album, Shelter. But I think this, um, maybe song probably packs more of a punch than the albums that Alcest did on the Shelter. And this is just how you do post rock. This is just a masterclass in the genre. Source of fair, deliver again. Mio Deji, as you can probably guess from the title, is the sort of the midday period of the album. This continues the emphasis on melody that we've seen towards this middle portion of the album and focuses slightly less on atmosphere than some of the other parts of the album, with the vocals here particularly sounding far more aggressive, though the hook's catchier than ever. This is the shortest track on the album, but delivers um, in a sort of, I don't know, maybe if sort of Sigur Rush went sort of fast-paced metal type thing, as in it has that sort of that catchiness to it, but yet this is still Souls to Fair, this is still more of a metal edge. This song still manages to hit all the right notes. It manages to overwhelm you as that crescendo builds furiously and intensely with the drums in particular, getting angry and angry, just beating harder and harder. We come to Non now, and I mean, on a 10 out of 10 album, it feels quite weird to say this song is a highlight, as of course all of them are stunning on this album, but Non is definitely one of the best if I really had to choose. Non just really encapsulates that light and shade balance effect that I love in a song, as the song reaches a musical peak of instruments, it just suddenly, yet not jarringly, is stripped away for a piano interlude, only to be brought back in with full effect, and this use of dynamics by Solstifer really is just masterful. They really know how to do this to an exceedingly high standard. And this track I really find ebbs and flows in a way that few bands manage to successfully do. It picks you up, brings you down, and takes you on a journey, and it really just couldn't be a better ride. With fast-paced drums and guitar paired with slow, ambient piano and strings, switching from one another with effortless ease seamlessly, but what I really love about this song the most is just when they rock out. After about the five minute mark and we hear one of the few solos on the album, the intensity just reaches boiling point. Critical levels and distorted riffs strip away the atmosphere, thundering noisily and wonderfully before the song again finds its ambient touch once again before the end. The penultimate song is Mio Afdan, and this is probably the slowest song on the album, as the album reaches its final part, and as the light fades away from the day, dusk dawns as this piano-dominated track provides some respite after the chaotic and intense non. This is the brief, the calm before the storm. It's just a, a beautiful little track in its own right, with harmonised vocals used to particularly great effect. It's largely free from guitar, and this song honestly doesn't need it. Instead relies on strings at the end to carry this song in an almost anathema-like fashion. Really though, what everything was building to is Nakt Mao. This is the closer and coming in at 11 minutes makes quite the statement as we find ourselves back where we begun time-wise. And to close an album like this and give it a satisfying payoff really is a challenge that I find many bands fall flat on their face, but unsurprisingly, Sels de Fier pull it off with ease as they create, I would say this is the most ambitious song on the album, well, quite possibly. This song is very difficult to describe. In essence though, it's like sort of many of the songs on the album. I mean, it's a journey, an experience that really just can't be conveyed by any combination of words that I certainly know of in the English language. And the beauty of the softer soundscapes, the fuzzy, distorted riffs, the emotional, vulnerable vocals of the singers and the create or the singer even, and the creation of atmosphere, the power, delicacy and beauty. Natma really seems to take these parts from the album and just integrate them into one eleven minute epic that really encapsulates it's like the mission statement of the album. As if the album is an artist paint palette with each song a different colour, Nat Mao just takes some of each, mixes them together to create this kaleidoscope of beauty and colour and sublime perfection. I mean, there's not much more I can say about Otter. 
Solstice Fair have just simply transcended rock music with the journey they take you on. It just defies anything I've experienced in rock music before. While the band has some elements you certainly will have heard in other post-rock, post-metal bands, the way they combine them and what they add to them make them a truly unique act and one to watch out for. I honestly cannot level a single criticism against this album. Nothing. This is a perfect 10 out of 10. This is album of the year. I highly doubt anything is going to rival it. This is the album, man. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and as usual, long live rock and roll.